John Steinbeck's Cannery Row was but a ghost town back in 1969. And the real people who were responsible for making the street what it was, no doubt found Mr. Steinbeck's fame a bit disturbing. For he had taken the real personalities and turned them into verbal sculpture. Perhaps a place would have lived anonymously, like other time-collapsed, decrepit, and forgotten canning empires, had it not been for Steinbeck. But the past was synonymous with the written work, and by the mid-50s, Cannery Row the novel became a controversial legend in the town of Monterey, California. By the time I arrived, the reincarnations had turned into a psychedelic dream. The ultimate escape for the artist dreamer, fleeing from a reality the 1960s had invented. To a timeless place where the past was present and the future didn't matter. So the Steinbeck characters were hauled from the real thing, and they were still there when I fortunately found the place. This story is a microcosm of the area with the few people that were left, living their lives in an area most would run from. We touched with some of those who had lived through the Steinbeck era and after. There were celebrations, street parades, and dances in the early 70s. A flock of people gathered like Woodstock or Haight-Ashbury. A renaissance was happening for the last days of Cannery Row. A group of us arrived to celebrate the Row's final days. Inside Hubden Cannery, though, it was business as usual, the last of its kind. I met Tony Sousa, who had lived his adult life at the location of today's Monterey Bay Aquarium. Hubden's product was Portola sardines back when sardines were around to be harvested in Monterey Bay. By 1969, Hubden was the last place to can anything on Cannery Road, putting squid into cans for worldwide market. Tony, who had lived and worked at Hubden since the 20s, was manager. October 1928. Been working here ever since. That'll be uh, those two and then these two over here, Herman. Herman was Tony's assistant, and both had tales of the old days. It wasn't easy to get them to speak. It took months of being turned away before they would. Well, I started to work in, uh... 1935, at the first time in Hoffen. I had a good life and, and a good start and a really good life at Canary Row. Well, I think this one started in seven, 1917. Burnt down in 21 and then I came here in 28. There was a, there was a season on sardines. There was a time where we used to pack small sardines in olive oil and 
But there's a, there was a season, I, I don't remember the months now, but it was a, about a seven, seven month period that they could fish. When the sardines disappeared, they, they started to fold up. Yes, from one year to the other, practically, it just went to nothing. That's why I always contend that it would can't, it isn't. It, depletion might have had something to do with it, but not wholly, because that uh, depletion, it uh, less and less for several years, and then if you quit fishing, they'll gradually come back in, say, in another 10 years or five years or whatever the cycle is, but they never did come back. And they, they dropped off from one year to the other. They couldn't find any sardines at all. talk of ghosts, and why not? The place looked ghostly and haunted. Empty corridors, eeriness. We heard tales of otherly spirits floating around, filling the night air with their presence. Chong Market was home to an elderly being. Its real world resident, Biba, told of a lady in white and her nocturnal visits. Biba ran the antique store inside the old Wing Chong building, keeping alive the last of a Cannery Row hangout for Doc and the boys. She lived in a reinvention of the place and held her nightly piano concerts wearing her red Chinese thing. The sound of the piano would echo up and down the street, churning up an aural mystique that rendered a mental painting of the past. According to Biba, it wasn't unusual that during one of her piano elegies, there would be an interruption from the ghost lady upstairs. Countless times after hearing the thundering thumps from above, Biba would hurriedly make a hasty dash up the stairs to encounter an empty hallway and another sleepless night. This was to go on until Biba herself died in the Wing Chong building. Today, no doubt, filling the evening air with ghostly sounds from a piano long removed.
the 60s became Cannery Row, a period in time that was to be very short-lived. I remember this place being so empty all of the time. And space is so beautiful, the quiet farness of space. Once I remember finding refuge from the speed around me. And there was something consoling about this old building I was in. It's always quiet here except for the sea and the birds. And on rainy days, the grain of the atmosphere is heavy. The feeling is as great or strong as you make it. This particular morning was the beginning of a week-long celebration for Ed Rickett's birthday. The last street party for the famous marine biologist had the signal for the end of something great. seen good times, bad times. And yeah, well, this, this is really the end of Canary Row. This is the end of, uh, of the era that uh, we old timers that have gone through.
from my rather unprofessional judgment and from talking with those who are very experienced. It definitely points to arson. And I think this could be very well deducted by the process of elimination. For instance, the recent fire, there's nothing there of electricity.